Hi, this is Packet Fabric. Thank you for joining today. We've given everyone a couple minutes to start. So we'll jump right into it. Appreciate you being here today. My name is Dan Geiger and I'm uh, the head of marketing. And we'll be covering leveraging NAS, that's Network as a Service for Agile Data Motion today. And uh, we have a great uh, program today. Um, I'll be presenting, I'll be hosting uh, this conversation. And uh, Chris Muro, our principal solution architect, will be here. Um, I'll, I'll be doing the, um, the NAS portion, talking a bit about an overview of, of what that is and what it provides. And Chris will be getting into specifics on how it's used and how it will um, accelerate um, agile data motion, motion, that is the movement of data and storage between uh, different clouds. Um, I think it'll be a really informative conversation. Uh, mine will be a little higher level. Then Chris will actually get into some more of the details, um, show you um, uh, some of the capabilities of, of what happens with data motion in a, in a cloud environment over a, um, in, uh, over on-demand interconnections. And then he'll actually also be doing a, a bit of a, uh, a, a sharing of screen where he'll be showing a tool that will um, identify uh, the movement of data and give you some performance metrics as well. So I think that'll be, it'll be, you know, from, from high to low and give you a lot of information uh, regarding uh, movement of data and in the, this new sort of network interconnect environment. First, first, let's let me say that um, we will be having a we have a chat box on the uh, sort of under your uh, I think on under your screen. It is a, a question mark. If you have questions during this presentation, we'll be addressing them at the end of the presentation. So put your questions in there, and we'll get to them um, afterwards. We'll also be providing the Amazon gift card at the end of the presentation too. So let me give you a little bit of an overview of Network as a Service. Um, what is it? Um, well, network as a service, really, it's it's an outgrowth, it's a logical outgrowth, and a follow-on activity to support clouds, and um, you know, or computing as a service. So, if you're having your computing in the cloud, um, then you have to interconnect it somehow. And since the cloud is on demand and shared, network as a service is really the same concept. Imagine interconnections that work on demand and can be um, uh, used for different access to different types of resources. Could be to co co-location facilities, could be to clouds, could be to public or private networks, or a combination of both. And so let's talk a little bit about um, uh, network as a service and kind of what's going on. Um, you know, digital business success really relies on cloud agility. And um, this is a, a quote from um, a Gartner analyst, and it's, you know, agility is required to move things fast and you don't know what the future holds. So it's really based on this quote where we say, we are not planning for one future. We need to plan for many possible futures. Things change in networking environments and cloud environments, and you need to be able to, to move with agility um, during this change, during these changes. And so let's look at the different states that we may work with in these environments. Um, a cloud core will often consist of many different uh, levels. Um, if you look in the center here, where it says mission critical workflows, it will be hyperscale cloud providers, you know, the Amazons, the Azures, the Oracle clouds, um, co-location data centers, enterprise SaaS uh, applications like Salesforce, and maybe some specialized services like cloud adjacent storage, so you can move data around. Uh, now you take that one step further and you'll be moving data between regions of a single provider. So a, a great question to, uh, to ask would be what constitutes a cloud core? If data is in the clouds, where is the core? Well, and what is the core? And so, you know, if, if you if you have this picture in your mind, then this is the, the other considerations you should think of. The condition of steady state. And so steady state is when you have, this is the easiest one, and it's sort of normal everyday demand. So you have the these co-location facilities, you have the clouds, you have your data in this 
interim state of uh, mission of the of um, storage, or let's say it um, compute and storage. And then what you have to do is create workflows. So you have to connect these to move the data around. Steady state is the normal everyday de demand. It's generally demands will grow over time in a relatively predictable way. And, um, and, and you know how that works. Then there's seasonality and lots of businesses experience this. Um, it's, it's retail, travel, back to school, tax season, end of financial quarter, whatnot. You'll see different seasonal needs. And then there's the ad hoc, there's innovation projects, there's site migrations, there's short-term business initiatives. Um, you know, like in, in, in media entertainment, for instance, which we do a lot of business with, um, um, there's creative productions that, you know, that become actual business entities that only last for six, nine months. Putting together a movie, you have to pull together all types of resources and very high and have very high bandwidth needs as you move um, the actual video and, and graphics around between those resources. And that all has to happen in six and nine months and then be over with. So that's a that's a different um, type of innovation, um, but it's a it's a it's a a, a very uh, changing environment. And then the final one would be disruption, and and this would be when you have new market opportunities or threats. You have regulatory requirements, mergers, acquisitions, um, disaster recovery scenarios, um, or a global pandemic as we've just gone through or, or are still going through. So what we want to do is be able to um, have a network that has the same type of adaptability and, and elastic uh, uh, workflows um, as is available in cloud resources. Now, what this network is, um, and it's a, another word for NAS, is software-defined cloud connectivity. And um, Gartner says by the end of 2024, 30% of enterprises will use software-defined cloud connectivity, up from less than 10% in 2020. So that's what Packet Fabric does. We provide this uh, cloud con connectivity. That's why we're talking about it today. But back in um, before 2020, there wasn't really, um, other than ourselves um, and a couple competitors, there wasn't really much in this area to really talk about and not quite the need. Cloud was coming up. Um, companies were still using um, primarily uh, traditional telecom and, and um, uh, WAN connections that they already had in place. Generally fairly expensive, generally not very flexible, but as the flexibility of of cloud connect of of cloud themselves has expanded, and as data needs have expanded and needed more flexibility, you need the same type of flexibility um, with internet working, and that's um, that's where this growth is happening in this market. And so we call ourselves a connectivity cloud. And um, you know what is that? Um, we describe ourselves in this way because it's really why we exist. We are taking high-speed WAN connectivity between data centers and cloud providers, and we've made it a cloud-like consumption experience. It's massively scalable and private opti it's in a private optical connection. From the ground up, it's, it's, it's all API-based. It's on demand, it's elastic. Um, you can really uh, dial up the, well, you can access on demand, uh, you're, you're um, in provision on demand, and you can get the the network re, uh, resources that you need. You could get anything from some megs to gigs of of um, network um, capacity in a matter of minutes, and then you can do these on a monthly basis. You could do it on an hourly basis. You can do it on a daily basis, a uses basis, and of course, you can also do it on longer terms to meet your requirements as you grow your business. And when you're looking at uh, a network as a service um, provider, um, you really want a NAS that's not an overlay. And when I talk about an overlay, you don't want to rely on VPN tunnels. Um, it's not efficient and it's slow and it winds up being costly. Um, you want to have a private optical backbone. You want it to be a massively and globally oriented. It has to be resilient, has to be a carrier class with, with um, 
um, five nines of SLAs. It has to be dual stacked, redundant, um, in avail across availability zones of different cloud providers so that you can use that network and reduce your egress charges as you move from one pro cloud provider to another. Um, and it has to be built end to end with automation. That's the only way you can make it on demand. That's the only way it has the flexibility that you need. And you want to think about it from a couple points of view. Um, you want to point to, you want it to be able to do point to point connectivity between your co-locations. You want to be able to have hybrid cloud connectivity so that you could work between um, your colos or your private cloud itself, you know, where you are, <clears throat> um, you may have in-house and you want to be able to connect that to the cloud. You want to have um, the ability to, to go from cloud to cloud and you want to be able to route it. Today, uh, Chris will be talking about something we call cloud router and it's an innovative uh, routing, you know, high capacity routing platform that we provide that is completely um, in the cloud and network based. And then of course you want to have any to any networking where you can connect multiple data center locations together from one port at any data center through internet exchanges for disaster recovery for SaaS to your partners and to the cloud at, at large. So on, uh, on that note, I just want to add one more thing is that we have recently uh, developed the capability to be working uh, with uh, Terraform, um, which makes it so that even we, um, even DevOps can work with engineer network engineering and you, to uh, provide the same types of access to resources uh, with uh, with internet with the, uh, the interconnections that they have in their networks as they've had with cloud storage, uh, cloud providers already. So they can use Terraform, uh, where you have to, uh, provided a Terraform provider, a DevOps can use that provide uh, that uh, Terraform provider, the Packet Fabric version, to turn up and down their network resources in the same sort of resource and Terraform framework that they can use with cloud providers as well. So on that note, I want to pass this on to uh, Chris Muro, our principal uh, Thanks, solutions Dan. architect. Um, so yeah, as Dan said, right, I mean, what I'm going to talk about is our cloud router service. Um, this service is really a virtual routing service. Um, what's great about this service is the agility that, that it gives uh, customers from a data motion perspective. And we're kind of going to go through that um, and then kind of go through that use case, um, as Dan mentioned earlier, right? So what our, our cloud router really is, is a distributed virtual routing service that really exists everywhere on our network. Um, and what this service allows us to do is provide the ability to um, transport customers' data across our network in between cloud providers and in between their on-premise location, right? So what is Cloud Router? Cloud Router really is, it's not a physical device, it's not a software function, and it's not bound ge by geography. So what do I mean by that? So if you look on the upper right here, right, you have a typical... <laughs> Chris, we can't hear you, Chris. Yeah, sorry, apologies, the dog barking. No problem. Yeah, so in the upper right here, right, you look at our typical network, right? They have three cloud providers, but each one is in a different region. Um, and usually you'd have a router in each one of those regions and you have to tie them together and do your routing in between. But with our cloud router, because it's not tied to geography, um, what it allows us to do is abstract all of that from the customer and make it look like a single router or a single instance and be able to connect everything together wherever that location is, i.e. these three different regions, and be able to route in between them without having to deploy a router physical or virtual at each locate physical location um, or, or geographic location, right? So that's what gives us this distributed architecture and the fact that this routing service exists everywhere in our networks and makes it all the way out to the edge. 
um, right? And, and it becomes very easy for customers to manage um, and operate and the CapEx savings as well, right? And we'll kind of go through that um, in another slide. Right, so kind of what is the value of the cloud router, right? Not only can customers save time from doing the deployment because they can spin it up instantly, um, but also um, money as well, right? For their new or existing hybrid cloud requirements, right? What does cloud router really do from a, a monetary perspective, right? It lowers your CapEx and your OpEx because there's no need for a physical presence in these multi-tenanted data centers where these cloud providers are to get to the edge of their networks, right? You don't need to actually have that physical presence near that. Our networks are already there and using our virtual routing service, i.e. cloud router, right? You can get access to that. Um, the removal of the trombone effect, right? So if you have a multi-cloud or hybrid cloud and you're bringing those connections only back down to your own prem, Right, and you're routing in between those clouds, between your prime, you get that tromboning effect, right? This is also private and secure across our network. Uh, we support from a cloud router perspective, multi hundred gig worth of throughput, and our throughput is guaranteed as well, um, right? So as I was talking about that tromboning effect and kind of the performance uh, and the time savings you get, right? So usually, as I said, right, the tromboning is kind of hairpinning, right? Um, you're basically going from Azure to Google, but you're going all the way through your prem, so you're transporting only back, adding increased latency and jitter, uh, right? Now, through an IP6 tunnel, right? So if somebody did a VPN, sure, you can do that, right? You have, obviously, the higher egress charges, um, but you do have throughput limitations, right? You can start multiplexing VPNs, um, right, and going beyond that. But you do run the throughput limitations with a VPN. And as I said, um, they does, do become ex expensive as you actually push traffic across them from one provider to another. But what you can do is actually get eliminate that throughput uh, limitation and decrease your latency and generate increase your performance by using our cloud router. Right. And the reason is, is that because our cloud, router, as I said, exists at the edge of our network. So when you're routing in between a cloud provider, you're never leaving our network, right? You're basically going from one cl cloud provider port, you go to our network, and depending where the other cloud provider port is, um, we transport you all the way there. You don't have to worry about bringing it all the way down to your premise um, or a private data center and then going all the way back. Right. And so a lot of these features, right, is cloud router. It works with those cloud providers. So it does support BGP and it does use BGP um, for peering and for dynamic routing. As you can see, there are other multiple uh, different features and functionality that one would expect um, from a router that is performing inner cloud routing. Um, so now I'm going to kind of go through this hybrid cloud use case, right? And it's really about a change in data motion for this customer and how by using our cloud router, they had the agility to be able to perform and actually complete um, what they were being asked from a requirement perspective, right? So they were, as I said, right, a current cloud router and they were also in AWS and GCP and they had their own on-prem um, and they had all three of those connected. Um, but all of a sudden there became a requirement that they had to move um, a large amount of data from their S3 storage to their Google Cloud storage. Um, and it was 42 terabytes. Um, but the issue became was is that they only had 50 meg interconnects because their normal usual data motion worth of traffic was very low. So there was no reason for them to have a very high connection. But because of their nature of their business, they could not and did not want to suffer any downtime. Um, to do a, an, ex, an upgrade of, an, of their existing connection, right? The cloud providers do take time for that upgrade to actually complete and for everything to update on their side, which can be 10 to 20 minutes, right? They, they couldn't have, could not suffer that um, and were not willing to accept it. Um, so what we said to them is, well, you can do this. This is not a problem, right? You know, over, obviously over your 50 megs, it's going to take a very long time but if we can up, you know, add a, a one gig connection to your cloud router and then be able to fail you over and you not really having any downtime outside of maybe a couple of seconds for the routing changes to implement, um, you would have that solution. 
you'd now be able to use those one gig connections to do your data transfer. Once you're done, you could delete that those connections and then continue to use your 50 meg connections that you already had, right? So this was kind of the solution that we provided to the customer and this was kind of what the customer ended up doing. Um, and you know, there are a couple of reasons as to why they did certain things and I'll kind of go through that. Um, so this is kind of just an architecture, an overview of, of what they really were, right? As I said, they had S3, they had Google Cloud storage and they had their own private data center, but they needed to move a lot of data between, but again, these were only 50 meg links. Um, so what, what do we had them do? They, again, parallel one gig links, they did their data transfer and then they were able to delete it, right? We do charge on a monthly basis, um, but those additional costs for them for those one gig links was a few hundred extra dollars a month. Um, and they only used it for, I think, a little over a week. But as we know, the cloud providers also charge for you to have that connection and it ends up being more uh, that will be charged in the month. So it also saved them money from there in addition to those egress charges. Now, why did they have to go to one gig? Well, not only because of the time, but as well, you know, with 50 megs, just to show kind of if they were to go stay with that, it would have taken them over two months um, to actually transfer 42 terabytes, right? Versus if they, when they use those gigs, they were able to do it in under four days. Assuming, again, this is assuming, obviously, the performance of both systems, uh, storage systems there can actually support that type of rate of traffic going back and forth, right? The other interesting thing, obviously, is the, the 50 meg will get overrun. So your latency increases and you do start seeing packet loss and your other traffic starts being affected. That would have been an issue for this customer because um, it would have, again, it would have caused them some downtime during those packet loss and uh, high latency events. And I'll kind of go through that as well. Um, so kind of, again, like why does a 50 meg, right? So if you start moving two gigs worth of data across a 50 meg interconnect, you'll start seeing your latency. Again, these are ICMP probes. So yes, they're not exactly high priority, but you can see the actual increase in latency you can also start seeing the uh, increase will actually well not even increase but actual packet loss starting to occur during that transfer now there's a slight time shift here just based on a polling of only five minutes um right and these probes running a lot quicker so uh, you can see that there now the same type of transfer over a one gig link you can see Outside of the interconnect failover during that time, uh, going from the 50 to 1 gig, there was no increase in latency and there was no packet loss experienced as well, right? So all of this really helped that customer, but the ability for them to be able to transition from their existing connection to a new but temporary connection to be able to meet the requirements that they were being asked um, was what was most important to them and really was al allowed them to be successful in this. Um, so what I'm kind of going to go through now is kind of like a show and tell as Dan mentioned earlier, right? And this show and tell is kind of based on this use case, but really just to show how we are a cloud native, right? This is not take, making use of Terraform at this point in time. It's using our API. Um, that is via our sending request to our API as well as our streaming telemetry um, that we provide as well to customers on their connectivity, as well as the ability to actually use our API to make changes to the, to the network or the cloud router in this instance, right? Um, and this is just to show as well, right? We can integrate with any application just as the cloud providers can as well. In this case, AWS and GCP by again, collecting those metrics and putting them all into a nice dashboard um, for a customer, right? And this is what allow, what, a customer, what allows a customer to really consume our services in a way that they would expect to consume them as a cloud native service. Um, so I'm basically just gonna share my screen and kind of just go through this quickly, um, right? So it is a Grafana dashboard. Um, there's multiple different things on here. Um, if as you can see, right, this is live actual polling statistics um, from my cloud router instance that I have to make a determination as to which link is active, right? 
So you can see there's a 50 meg link just like in that use case and there's a one gig link here as well. I already created this in, just for time sake here. Um, and you can see as well, right? I can get that status. I can do all that by pulling our API. Um, I can also get telemetry statistics. So these gauges are basically getting streaming telemetry from us. And I'll show you as I move traffic around, you can start seeing those gauges starting to increase. And then again, this is via our API as well, but this is more of a polling type thing. Um, and what I'm going to show you kind of is basically moving data between GCS and S3. Now it's using an R clone host, right? R clone does allow you to do multiple transfers simultaneously. It takes care of all that for you, um, just to make this very simplistic. Um, as you can see, I, I did some transfer before, and what I did do was transfer on this active path. And as you can see, the active path right now is the 50 meg connection. And you can see while I was doing that transfer, the latency increased dramatically, right? And we even started seeing packet loss as well, um, right? So this started what the customer experienced and why they kind of came to us as well as when they realized, you know, how long it was going to take. And when they set up what we said, right, is basically add those two one gig connections. And when you're ready, you can basically fail them over. Um, now, they could do them via the API right here, or they could do them via our portal. So if I wanted to say this GCP, and I want to fail it over by changing the local preference and the med values so that it looks better to the cloud router and it also looks like a better path to the VPC, um, I can do that, right? So if I just click on here, it's basically going to go out there. It's making an API call to us, and it's basically saying, now on this connection, change these. And this is basically the response and the result. And what will you'll see what happen is basically this will start changing over. And you can see now, right, the one gig is now the active link. Um, if I do the same thing on the AWS side, it'll do the same thing, right? We're going out, making that API call, getting that response, and making the one gig the actual active um, link. Right. This will update in a couple of seconds based on uh, my refresh rate here. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to send some traffic across so you can actually see. Again, I'm just using our clone, as I said. Right. So I'm just moving uh, just generic data, but some pretty large files um, and some small files as well. And I'm just going to drag and drop some of these over um, just to, again, just as I said, just to generate traffic um, so we can actually see that going across. So that was uh, S3 to GCS, and now I'm going to move some the other way as well uh, from GCS into S3. So I'll just drag and drop some of these, bring them over. There we go. And basically we'll do that. Um, and we can start seeing, you know, files are starting to move over if we go here as well. Although this one's probably moving the large files first. Um, right, because it is doing multiple transfers at a time. Um, so if we go back to our dashboard, right, we can start looking for and seeing the traffic actual start increasing, right? So we can see now our, our clone host here basically showing the throughput, which is basically the amount of throughput that it's doing, right? It's basically pulling it from S3 and then copying it into GCS and vice versa. Um, as well as you can start seeing that the traffic on these one gig links is starting to actually increase as well. Right, and you can start seeing the different jobs. You'll see more transferred files going across here as well. But what will be interesting and you won't see is you're not going to start seeing the increases in latency and the packet loss as, as this one gig link is actually used. Right now, I also have the ability to use a VPN tunnel. So you'll see this IPsec tunnel. Again, that, that's a cloud VPN tunnel between AWS uh, and, G and Google Cloud, right? And again, like I said, there are throughput limitations to those cloud tunnels. Um, it's about uh, one and a quarter gig uh, worth of throughput. Now again, you can add multiple tunnels and try to multiplex them out across that, but you are gonna hit that limitation and you're not gonna get completely symmetric balance uh, routing like you would want in a low balance situation. Now, with this, you kind of get that and you get that control, right? Um, 
and we can obviously do over one gig. We just use one gig in this example because of the amount of data. But again, as I said earlier, we can do a uh, multi hundred gig. So you can attach 10 gig to 100 gig connections to these cloud routers from a cloud provider or your private data center as well. Um, right. And you can, again, like I said, you can start seeing everything start increasing. You can see the graphs going. Um, and again, all of this is just API. It's basically going out to the cloud, our API, AWS or GCP, um, as well as the other hosts that are running our clone and other things and just gathering it and putting a single location. But it really shows how you can now start integrating the network into everything else. Um, and put it into that single monitoring and uh, very easy DevOps type model where everything can be seen in a single location and we don't need to drive into or open a different window or go to a different portal to provision or make a change, right? Everything can be done uh, via APIs doing some sort of nice integration into a, a software package. Um, and I think that's pretty much it, Dan. So I'll bring back the slides and I guess we can go into uh, a little Q&A. Thank you, exactly. Great. Terrific. Okay. All right, Chris. And Chris, just to be clear, that was all no, live, all right? Live. I mean, that that's wasn't a simulation. That was... Um, that's going across it. Um, they are live VPCs. Yeah. And um, yeah. It is actual moving of data. Now the data itself is just nice. you know, a bunch of zeroed out files, but um, it is actual data uh, with yeah. size and we are moving bits and bytes back and forth. Terrific, yeah, well, good. Well, um, we actually, Chris, it looks like we, if there's any questions, please add them now. Um, it looks like right now we have one question, Chris. I don't know if you see it, but I'll, I'll say it and if you don't mind answering it it's currently yeah so i see so you currently a, use uh, vpn for your secure, secure yep. connection can yep. you replace it with network as a service uh yes with our cloud router right a physical connection to us is not required now again if you're talking about a vpn between two cloud providers yes you can absolutely use network as a service to replace that um right if you're looking for a replacement for uh, VPN from your on-prem into a cloud provider, uh, that's going to require some sort of physical replacement, um, right, from your prem into a data center to get onto and into those cloud providers. But in between clouds, absolutely. And where we can help them with is is um, between, uh, from a data center. Yes, I mean we are the cloud we, we then, do right? exist in these multi-tenant data center facilities uh, we call them our points of presence yeah. and uh, we do that's where we meet our customers right they physically connect to our network uh, in these data centers and they do sometimes if they don't have physical presence they do have to get a uh, last mile or local access circuit into uh, one of the closest facilities that we're at uh, right and then from there as well once they're connected to us again because cloud router exists everywhere everything can be connected to. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Um, any other questions at this point? Um, I see a question on, uh, will participants get a recording? Um, yeah, we're going to um, uh, actually be putting this uh, presentation um, online and you'll be um, uh, it, it'll be on our um, our website, and so you'll be able to find it there. And I'm not sure if uh, an email is sent out with um, with where that is. I, I expect that it is sent out to the attendees to let you know um, where you can find that. Um, and then um, I do want to let you know that um, we, if you, for more information, you can download information that should be right under your current screen that you're looking at or on Packet Fabric eBooks and Cloud Router info paper. And if you want to contact us, here's the contact information. Um, and um, and oh, oh, and we'll also be getting back to you um, with um, with who the winner of this is of the uh, the Amazon card is. Um, yeah, we'll let you know who that is. We'll we'll make that choice and get it back to you. Um, appreciate. 
all of your time today. I hope this was informative. Um, I, I always learn things when I uh, hear, hear Chris talk. And so appreciate your time and um, have yourselves a good day and, and keep us in mind. Thank you.